black flame of the Amazon, featuring Harold Lloyd, world famous explorer in person. <laughs> Preceding chapter, at a word of command from Mr. Noyce, Pat Donovan attempts to lift the aeroplane into the air and away. But the river is narrow, the banks a tangled mass of lianas and mangroves. They might have gotten away safely if Butch Grogan hadn't pulled a cruel, dirty trick. As the big amphibian taxis upstream in a takeoff, suddenly a native canoe darts out into the river, right ahead of the whirling airplane propeller. And believe it or not, the canoe was filled with little Indian children. Grogan knew that Noyce and his party wouldn't take the risk of running into that canoe, even to save their own lives. The plane shuts off its motors and comes to a standstill. The canoe is safe. Grogan then sends an Indian messenger out to the ship with a message ordering all aboard to come ashore at once. Mr. Noyce decides that it is best to do as ordered. And now, in the meantime, in a little hut at the far end of the village, sits Grogan and his rat-faced partner, Limey Scroggin, a cockney Englishman as big a rogue as Grogan ever hoped to be. They are studying the secret code. All right, all right, Limey. No use arguing. It's right here, ain't it? Yeah, but, Limey Boots, you can't get no other tail out of that map and that bloomin' secret code. Uh. That's a laugh, it is. A secret. Well, we can't make no sense out of it. I know, I know. What are you shooting your mouth off about? Ain't I doing the next best thing? I got noise here. But why bring that blighter here? Exploring Noyce and his outfit. Yeah, they're going to get us, you and me, into trouble. And mind what I'm telling you. Oh, crawfishing, huh? Uh, Afraid I'm... of your neck. Why, you, you little squirt for two cents, I'd not... Uh, oh, you would, would you? I don't think so. Uh, Grogging, you don't scare me. Not one little bit, you don't see. I'm the blighter that knows where old man Bride is hidden. And don't you for be forgetting it. Yeah, it was me that arranged it with the Indians. Yeah, yeah, I should have handled that myself. Ah, uh, but you didn't, did you? Um. No. It was a dirty piece of work, and you thought better to leave it to me. So without me, but you can't ever find that Inca temple. You can't even find the black flame, but I can. All right. Well, skip it, skip it. You get in my hair. Always so sure of yourself. Here, listen, Butch. I'm your partner, ain't I? We goes even on this treasure 50-50 like partners shoot. But I'm warning you. No good will come out of this year stunt you're pulling with that noise fella. The Brazilian authorities knows him. He comes up country here with their permission. I know, I know. They watch out for him because he works in cooperation with the Brazilian government. Oh, yes, and if he passes out of the picture, we'll have a flock of Brazilian soldiers up here nosing around looking for him. And if he finds us, the game's up. It blooming well is, I told you. Okay. Then what's on your mind, big shot? No rough stuff with noise, see? Get him and his party back down the river out of the way because we don't want no trouble with them. You're as dumb as they make them. Look, what happens if we send Noyce back down the river? Why, he warns the Brazilians right away and comes back up here with them, leading them personal, I tell you. All right, what about it? We got the blooming treasure in the airship, ain't we? We can get back in the coast before the Brazilians ever get anywhere near the Inca ruins. Now, that's what you think. But that treasure ain't just sitting there waiting on us. The main thing is this map here. 
Now, tell me, does that mean anything to us? Of course it don't. It's a ruddy monkey's puzzle. That's what it is. Yeah, in this secret code. Huh. It looks like a child picture drawn with funny marks. Yeah, and a lot of dizzy signs printed on it. Is that... Can you read it? No, I tell you, I can't read it. But the old man Brady can. And if we was to up off and get old Brady, well, well don't you see? Ah, well, listen, you... Yeah, none of that, Boots. I stutter about enough of your lip. And I'm in on this racket, see, and I'm staying in. And Mr. Boots Grogan is going to like it or to lump it. All right, then. But I'm going to handle this in my own way. You may know where Jim Brady is hidden and all that, but I can easy find out without you. Oh, you mean then that we split partners now? Suits me, Grogan. Suits me all to pieces. You go your way, and I'll go mine. But I'll get to the Inca ruins first, and I won't have no Brazilian authorities tramping on me. You'll see ah, that. Ah, pipe down and let me get away then. Look now, it takes both of us for this, and we need them two kids. Old Brady is stubborn as a mule, and he won't do a thing about guiding us to the treasure. Yeah, he die first. Yes. But a little of the old Indian stuff, you know, Boots. The antil medicine. That usually makes him speak up. No, no, no. Not Brady. I know him too well. No, our only hope is to get them two kids. Once we have them, old man Brady will do anything. Because he thinks the world of them two kids. Yes, and speaking about kids, look yonder. A girl and a boy just coming up from the river into the village street. The old witch doctors are bringing them. Yeah. And Noyce and that man of his, Pedro. Hey, look. Look, Limey. Yeah? I'm handing that part over to you. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to see that they're kept out of my way, see? Oh, I'll get you, but no dirty work. But at least not until we get our hands on the actual treasure. Yeah, okay. That suits me. That'll be soon enough. Now then, I'm going to try and bluff the kids and the pilot Donovan's. Yeah, especially the kids. If they're as stubborn and bullheaded as their father, we got to use kid gloves, see? Oh, 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 oh. Yes, and you're the one that can do it, Boots. Look, partner, I'm blooming sorry I got the wind up. I just lost my temper. No hard feelings, I... Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Now then, listen, leave the kids to me. Oh, I won't interfere, Governor. Have me hands full with noise. But don't worry, I'll get him out of the way, both noise and his man, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> That's the stuff. Yeah. Uh, you now, you so head long. down the street. Yes. And when the Indians bring noise and Pedro, get them put into the big Malacca. Oh, yeah, you yeah. know, the big hut down yeah. the street there. And you stick right with them. Okay. And you better have a few Indians help you keep guard. Yeah. All right, now, get going. Okay. Get going. I'll be back after I get noise all fixed. Uh, here they come. Look at that young lad, Butch. You're going to have a handful, all right. <laughs> Jimmy, there goes Scroggins now. Yeah. Now, if that's his partner, Butch's taste must be all in his mouth. He's cruel looking. Even more so than the witch doctor here. Come on in, you two. Why keep me waiting so long? Huh. Nice way to treat a man who's trying to help you. Tisai hoopa hatwa. Moa tisa hoopa. Imani kai bak Go on, go on, get going. Hoopa hatwa. Pisai pane. Imani panika. Hoopa hatwa. Why send the witch doctor away? Fact is, maybe Gene and me, we sort of prefer him rather than you. At least he's a savage and doesn't pretend to be a white man. There you go, blowing steam off again. Listen, kids, I'm trying to help you. I've known your father for a long time. That's the worst part of it. You were supposed to be his friend. And look what you did. Stole his treasure map and made him a prisoner. I had a reason for that. I was part of that expedition, wasn't I? I had a right to a share of that treasure. But no. Yeah, your father spoke up and said there'd be no share. But how could Dad share with you? Dad was trying to get the Inca gold relics for the museums so people all over the world could learn more about the Inca people. Ah, what do we care about what other people lay in the jungle? We go after gold and for what gold is worth to put us on easy street. Well, not all the white men who come in here are that way. Mr. Norris, for instance. He doesn't want the gold to make him rich. Now, that's what you think. But look now, I know this noise fella better than you do. I'm honest about it, and I want a share of that gold treasure, but only my rightful share. Maybe noise hasn't said so, but he'll want his too. That is, if I let him. But I ain't. And what do you mean to do with Mr. Noyce and Pedro and Pat Donovan? Now, Donovan's a pilot, and he's going with us. We need him to handle the ship. Okay. 
But about Mr. Noyce and Pedro. Not Noyce. Uh, he's nothing but a meddling busybody, and he's sticking his nose into things that don't concern him at all, and this time he went too far. <laughs> I'll say he did too far. <laughs> Listen, Mr. Grogan, you don't mean... You to... leave all that to me, young fella. I said I'd take care of everything, and just to show you that I'm on the level, here, here. Here's a secret code. I admit I can't understand it. I need your help. But to show you that I mean to be on your side, here, here, you, you take well, it. Well, okay. But now what do I do with it? It isn't any good to Gene and me as long as you have us prisoners. Uh, I'm glad you understand things. You're right. That secret code ain't much use to you unless I say so. But now, uh... <laughs> Let's get together and look at these marks in the middle of the page. You know, I don't get them. Well, only Jimmy and me understand them. We wrote them, and even our daddy couldn't read them. Ah, good, good. Now, now, what do you say? I, I got a pencil and paper here, and uh, you read what it says there, huh? Tell me so as I understand. And then I'll write it down here, and we can get going. But wait, Mr. Grogan. We just can't read this right off. All right. All right. No great rush. Take your time and just start studying right now. Ah, I see they're bringing Donovan up the street. But uh, you two go ahead and study. When I get back, I'll expect you to tell me everything. You get me? <laughs> yeah. Snap into it. I won't take very long. Oh, gosh, Jimmy. We're up against it. Do you think Grogan means that he'll share with Daddy? Well, not Grogan. He wants to find out about the map, just how to read the junk we wrote here. And when he does find out, well, we're just out of luck. And we can't escape. Look out there. There are two Indian guards in the street. Oh, gosh, Jimmy. Think of something quick before Grogan gets back. Just can't find out how to read that secret code now. Well, I know it, Jean, but what can we do? Oh, well, I tell you what. Let's tear the code into little pieces, huh? Well, yeah, but, but what good would that do, Jean? There's no fire, so we can't burn them, and there's no place to hide them. Well, he'd just put the pieces together again, and then where would we be? Oh, well, maybe it's best to tell Grogan, and maybe we can bargain with him about Mr. Norris and Pedro. Say, Jean, I think you got something there. Look. I've got a swell idea if it works. And Mr. Noyce and Pedro will be sitting pretty. Yeah? Look, Jean, you're hungry, aren't you? Oh, I sure am, Jimmy. Well, that's part of my plan. Now, listen. A plan, eh? So Jimmy has a plan. But what has Jean got to do with it? Why did he ask her if she was very hungry? Butch Grogan is out of the hut for the moment, and when he returns, he expects the children to explain all the secret writing on the code. But will Grogan be disappointed? And if he is, can you guess just how disappointed he'll be? If you listen in at this same hour next time, you won't be disappointed, for there's surprises in store, lots of them. So don't miss it. <laughs> 